Hey, what's up guys? I'm working on a little project here, trying to get power. Um, I already got a, a roof solar panel up here, 100 watts, not much, but it does the job of keeping the fridge that I have back here and the fan trickle charged to my Anchor Solex C1000. But today I'm testing out this E-Taker Fleet 1000, the F1000. It's an alternator charger, so it works off your car battery to charge your vehicle power stations or batteries um, for the camper. So real quick, I'll show you how it works. This would be the car battery. <laughs> it comes with the wiring, inline fuse. Here's the actual unit from E-Taker, F1000. And it also, if you have a solar panel, has an input for solar. So it could take solar and car battery at the same time, 500 watts and up to 500 watts. So for up to a total of 1000 watts into your power station. Now, here's the actual unit. What I was drawn to with this thing over the um, competitors is it has a vibration sensor built in. So when I start the vehicle and drive away, it'll sense that the car's on and it'll automatically start charging. And I have it set right now to 300 watts, but it could go 300, 400, or 500. Now, this blue light right here is actually the solar input. So the solar input is currently getting a charge. And this other input over here with the green cable is from the alternator. So I have it running underneath my vehicle, my um, seat through the floorboard and in through the firewall where the electrical comes in from the truck and into the car battery. So let me show you the app where my power station is right here. 47 watts is currently coming in, 43 watts. That is from the solar panel only. Now let's go ahead and start the truck which in my opinion, um, well, my experience starting the vehicle simply isn't enough vibration to actually get this unit moving. So the blue light over here should come on. There it goes. So this time it was enough movement. I probably bumped it with my knee or whatever, but it sensed the vibration and you saw it come on just now. So like I said, I have it set to 300 watts. Let's come back up here. It's gonna build itself up to 300 watts. So there's 312. Plus it's gonna take from the solar. So now you're at 364. If I had a bigger solar panel up there, obviously you'd get a lot more power. Now let's bump this bad boy. Uh, let's hold it down until it's blinking. Then you could change it to the setting. So I'll change it to 500 Watts. Let's watch it go up. Oh, you saw it right there. It's already shooting up. <clears throat> so this is gonna end up going about 540 once it builds itself up. Sometimes the app is a little bit delayed, by the way. We'll let it build up, come back to it in a second. So yeah, the output is right here. This cable is the one that it came with. And it came with this cable and protective sleeve for it. And then this I added on, which right now I just have it routed to the back of the truck where the solar input is in my camper. It actually, the manufacturer Overland Campers routed it down and inside the camper. So that's what I have it hooked to right now. Eventually, I'm gonna follow the same line that the F1000 follows up into the bed and I'm gonna connect it in there. But I haven't got a chance to uh, do that yet. So yeah, let's go back to it. It's at 526 watts coming in. Now it depends, of course, on the sun, <coughs> the length of your wiring, various factors of how much solar is gonna come in. But as you can see right now, both inputs are on. Let's go ahead and drop this back down to 400. Oh, let's see, I might've done something. Yeah, let's let it reset itself for a second. Okay, it's still set to 500. So we'll hold that down till it's blinking then change it to 400. Now this should drop down to the 400 range. And there you go, 400 plus some change from the solar. Now the idea is you shut off your vehicle, let it sit for a few minutes. The vibration sensor stops working or stops sensing vibration. So this light um, is gonna turn off and this light should stay on from the solar. So uh, you could already see right now, the vibration is not no longer being sensed. 
so it is drawing down power from the vehicle now this e-taker f1000 also has a sensor built in to sense how much voltage is coming from the battery of your vehicle so if it drops below i think 12.4 volts which is like 80 80 to 90 percent it's going to go ahead and cut off power from taking from there so there you go it drew all the way down to 46 watts which is just my solar input so now my car is parked i close up the vehicle and it's just going to be running off solar so that's pretty awesome you know i don't have to worry about switching anything over plugging anything in turning anything on and off now if i was going to be away from the vehicle for a few days i'd probably switch this thing off and maybe plug in the solar directly into my power station which i have stored back here here you can take a look inside the truck camper right now but yeah it runs a fridge i got the max air fan computer i got a computer monitor in here but here's the power station that's the input right there from uh from the f1000 everything's plugged into that guy anchor select c1000 let's come back over here just so you can see again the lights off for the alternator charger the lights currently on for the solar input 100 watt panel up on the roof it is getting about 47 watts in right now which i was hoping it would be getting a little bit more but the sun is not hitting it directly so i have the panel right here the sun to get 100 percent would be right here 100 watts but the sun is way over here today, kind of low. Full bright sun though. But yeah, it's not hitting the panel directly. But it's enough, 45 watts is enough to trickle charge it. The sun's out all day. As you can see right now, that fridge is taking no power. So it's a very efficient fridge that I have in here. And it's 33 degrees in there, so that's nice. Just got some cold drinks. Some Modellos, some seltzers, White Claws. Got some coffee, water, apple juice down there for the kids. Yeah, so, so far the E-Taker F1000 has been, has been exactly what I've been looking for. It's a hefty device. You could um, mount it. You could set it down under your seat like I'm doing for right now. So my next task is gonna be to wire up the solar under the vehicle along the electrical um, third brake light and then up into the camper, just like I have it currently wired from the F1000. And then the rest of it comes through here, up through the firewall with the OEM wiring into the, into the truck to my battery. So yeah, that's the E-Taker F1000. It's gonna be great for when we're overlanding, camping, park the truck. Uh, it'll be getting sun from the solar panels through the day, and then that's usually not enough. We go do a little trail or find a new campsite. It's gonna be pulling up to 500 watts from the battery and of my vehicle and another up to 500 watts from your solar. So that's a huge benefit over some of the other competitors in the market. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about the, uh, the E-Taker F1000. Plenty of information on their website, but I could help you out if you have anything you want me to test out. So have a good one, guys.